Thank you, Catherine. So this is a joint work with uh, our group in uh, Calgary and uh, Lionel in Marseille. Uh, so Jakub Jaginski is a new postdoc in Calgary, was a student of uh, Stevo in Toronto, and he is definitely the, uh, he has been the Ramsey workhorse of that project, okay. Uh, I take uh, the opportunity to thank the organizers for the conference. I've been here for a few weeks. It's been a really a pleasure uh, to work here, and we've been uh, continuing here to, uh, to do the final touches to this, uh, to this project. There's Jakub, uh, working uh, in our seminar room, and you can see he is the workhorse, there's no doubt. Uh, paper and pencil and, uh, and doing some hard work. Uh, by the way, I, I had originally a picture of Ramsey, just for fun. The original Ramsey, uh, and so uh, for today, uh, Jakub is replacing uh, Ramsey. <laughs> okay, so uh, I, I want to give some example of uh, Ramsey classes, okay? So just so that you can uh, get a feel for patterns of what's happening, that's what we're after. Uh, then we try to essentially formalize what we're trying to do. So take some classes of structure and see how we can expand them to Ramsey uh, classes. So that's the uh, pre-compact expansion. And then uh, uh, we will try, or uh, we'll have a short discussion and try to explain what we are doing. Okay. All right, so uh, we are interested with actually Frysay classes. Uh, just uh, you don't need specific to know what to do, but those are finite structures that can be amalgamated, so you can glue them together until you reach a, some kind of generic structure that's called the Frysay limit. It's homogeneous and universal. And uh, we are after, as I said, the Ramsey property of those classes. So that is the standard but formal definition that I'm putting here. So given two uh, structures, X and Y, so again, those are finite a finite number of colors, there should be a large enough Z in the class such that if you color all the copies of X, then you can find a Y, a copy of Y in your Z, such that all the copies of X and Y are the same color. Okay, so that is the Ramsey property of the class, or you say uh, the class is Ramsey, it all means the same thing. Okay, so here's my, my, my uh, sample of examples, starting from Ramsey himself, so just the finite sets or the finite linear orders is a Ramsey class. Uh, then comes two very important examples, that's the vector space in Boolean algebras in the early 70s. Okay, so that's pattern number one, uh, just the standard classes by themselves. Uh, then comes Ramsey classes where you, uh, you have uh, an arbitrary linear ordering. Okay, so you have a finite structure and you just expand the class to have a binary relation. And that's a, a linear order. Uh, uh, here's a, a general uh, uh, classes, that's the hypergraphs. Uh, finally, many symmetric and reflexive relations. Okay, uh, that's a result of uh, late 70s, specific uh, a, a case of the hypergraphs are just the simple graphs, so undirected uh, graphs by themselves. Uh, you take all those finite graphs, you add the linear order, that becomes a, uh, a uh, Ramsey class. Okay, so that's the first uh, basic example. Okay, everybody follows on that. Uh, next example, uh, you take a, a, a class of irreducible hypergraph. Um, take of the uh, complete graph as a specific example, but what it is, it really is the condition so that you can do uh, free amalgamations. You take two structures, you want to put them together, that should still be in the, in the class, and if you can forbid something and still being able to do that, that's what it's called to be irreducible. Okay, so that's a general result. Neschitrel riddle again, just about the same period. Uh, next example, uh, quite, uh, quite deep, so the metric spaces, say with rational distances, uh, that's also a, uh, a class which has the Ramsey property. Okay, uh, next pattern, you add a nice ordering. 
Okay? Example number one, just equivalence relation. And what you add is a convex ordering. It means that the equivalence classes become an interval. Okay? And if you add all those possible orderings to your class of finite structures, that's Ramsey. Example number two, partial orders. You add linear orders that are extensions of your partial order. That's a class of finite structures. So there's now two relations, if you want, the original partial order plus the linear extension. That's Ramsey. Uh, vector spaces, again, we saw them before. They show up again by having natural ordering. Uh, natural ordering that was originally uh, defined by, by Thomas is what you do is you, uh, you order your finite field. You take a basis, you order your basis, and then you do some lexicographic ordering. Okay? That's again Ramsey. All right? It's not, it's not clear that by adding some relations, you're still going to be Ramsey, not at all. Okay? But the proof that this one is Ramsey is really the original proof. So that's why I still put the Graham Lee Brochall proof. Okay? So this ordering is, if you want, um, is, is not important. Okay? All right? So two vector space are isomorphic if and only if they are isomorphic with that ordering. Uh, same thing for Boolean algebras. Okay? So there's a natural ordering definition that you can do there. Uh, Ultrametrics uh, with convex ordering, there it means that uh, balls are intervals. And then uh, there's also a recent result of uh, Mio Drag on semi lattices that if you do linear extensions, then you also Ramsey. Okay, and uh, Mio Drag will talk about this, I think, uh, later this week. Okay, uh, next pattern uh, uh, you need to add more. All right, and that's a little bit where the difficulty is coming. So, here is a kind of a boring example to some, to some degree. You have an equivalence relations with classes of size at most n. Okay, now if you remove all kind of orders, this is one of the homogeneous graph. It shows up as a Frise class. If you start to put some order and just orders, it's suddenly it's not amalgamation anymore. Okay, the, the class is kind of dead. And now it's revived. Okay, so you put n unary predicates in a, in a trivial matter. You have classes of size n, and you just freeze every point in your class. Okay. So essentially, you're coming back to somewhat of a trivial structure there. Okay? But that's kind of a pattern that will come back later. Uh, this one, much more interesting, equivalence relations with at most n classes and, um, and arbitrary ordering. Okay? But we need predicate. Each time you have some kind of a finite structure and you want a Ramsey property, you essentially have to freeze everything. So you add uh, uh, unary predicates for each class. Uh, the Frise limit is this one. Again, this will come back later. Uh, this shows up in the uh, KPT paper uh, with a very nice little proof. Uh, propaganda for Yakub again, uh, boron trees. Uh, Swavek talked about this yesterday. Uh, so, uh, was it Manuel? Anyway, so boron trees, those are the leaves of trees of uh, where every, uh, every node has degree three. Okay, so there's a four array relations which decide if they have disjoint paths. So anyway, so those are the structures. And to make this Ramsey, uh, uh, an ordering is not going to do it. You need to add some kind of an orientation. And, and in that case, it turns out to be a, a three-array relation. Uh, and local orders, well, this is what I want to talk about. Okay? So I want to go through some directed graphs and see, uh, and see what happens. OK, questions? All right. Okay, so uh, questions, can we formalize this notion of being close to Ramsey? So in a sense, you can always make a class Ramsey. What you do is you actually can freeze everything. You can add a unary predicates to everything you see. And therefore, if I look for all the, the, uh, the structures x inside y, well, if I've frozen everything and there's only one, well, it is Ramsey. Okay? It's of only one color. So that's the extreme case. And, and what you've seen in our patterns is, is we're just pushing far enough 
to make it Ramsey. A and that's what you want to formalize. You see, exactly what are we doing? OK? Uh, question number two, can you explain what we're doing? Th that, that's, that's a bit more difficult. OK, so uh, uh, Lionel proposed a, a, a definition of uh, pre-compact uh, some time ago. Uh, the definition is quite simple, is every structure has only finitely many expansion. So in particular, if I add only finitely many relations, that's pre-compact. OK, not impossibly I could add infinitely many relations if, for example, if the arity is increasing. If you give me a finite structure, at some point the arity go, goes overboard and you cannot distinguish anymore. OK, so, so that's, that's a notion of, uh, of small expansion. OK, and that, that rules out this silly case that I just mentioned about freezing everything. Now, just to give you an indication of, of this being a reasonable definition, uh, uh, those guys that are here who have been working on these results in the last few weeks, I've seen them. They've been polishing the proof. Julien was nice enough to, to invac convince me that this works. Uh, right? <laughs> uh, there's, a, there's a good connection with the, the topological dynamics. And the equivalence is actually very natural. So at the very least, this definition is natural not only in this complexity in the combinatorics, but in the topological dynamics framework. OK? And, and, and I will use this later in the, in the, in the, in the discussion. OK, uh, conjecture. If you're brave enough, if you've seen enough example and you're, you're brave enough to make a claim, uh, this is one version. Uh, every Frise class with finally many isomorphism types in each cardinality uh, as a Frise uh, precompact Ramsey expansion. Essentially, we can always do this uh, by, by the uh, previous e equivalence. You can do this on the topological dynamics side if you'd like. Okay? All right. So uh, now I, I can explain to you the title of the talk. It's, uh, it's what I would call experimental mathematics. Uh, OK, so you have a conjecture. You're trying to understand something. It's actually quite natural. You're going to run through all the examples that you know and see if they're going to tell you something so that you can step up to understand and give a framework for what it is. OK? So in the example I gave you, we already covered the simple graph. The next step is, thanks to Greg, we have a list of the homogeneous directed graph. All right? And in fact, I think, you, you know, I, I think there's some great structures there. And I think Greg did, never made enough marketing on those, on those structures. OK, so there's some really beautiful things. So what I'm going to do is go through and, um, and, and quite quickly, because a lot of this was known which ones are Ramsey and which ones have expansions. But I'll tell you a little bit what those structures are, what is the pre-compact expansion, and maybe a, a, an argument for the Ramsey. Okay? And, and not only this, you, you're, our job is to try to, to, to see if those say something, if we can see some kind of patterns there and get a general idea of what's happening. Okay? Uh, I will only spend a bit more time on S2. That's the local orders I mentioned. So I'll give you an idea because it's quite simple and doesn't fit the mold. And uh, I'll talk about the semi-generic, which, uh, which is a bit interesting. OK? All right? We're ready? OK, let's start easy. Finite cases. I said I would do them all. So the, the finite cases is uh, you freeze everything. OK? So you just add a unary predicate for every vertex. That's obviously Ramsey. OK, done. Uh, I omega, so that's, uh, there's no edge at all. Uh, that's the usual Ramsey theorem. OK, so uh, you, you just add an arbitrary linear extension. So in fact, uh, I think we've already covered this one before. Uh, and, and so is the, is the rationals. OK, so those are homogeneous directed graph uh, and, and that we've seen. Uh, the random tournament. Okay. So you take the class of finite tournaments, you glue them together, you get the random 
uh, uh, tournament. And that's again is known, so you just add arbitrary linear orderings, and that's Ramsey. Okay? All right, so again, those are, this is a class that was not Ramsey by itself. You just add this linear ordering, or you're Ramsey. Okay, so let's do S2. So, uh, local order, uh, so that's a tournament. And local order means that the out, the set of out vertices becomes a linear order. So are the in vertices, okay? So I look at all the arrows out, I look at that set, and with the edge relation, that really is a linear order. So are all the vertices that are coming in. So this is a, uh, I look at all the class of finite local orders. I prove that it's a Frise class. You can glue those things together. You get a Frise limit, and that's what's called S2. Now, why I want to do this, and, and we all like it, is because this is one of those often rare cases you can actually see what this Frise limit looks like. And we can describe it. We have a model for it, if you want. So what you do is you take the unit circle, you take all the points with rational angles, okay? And you put an arrow from x to y if the angle from x to y on the counterclockwise counting is less than pi. So that's the model for the Frise limit of the amalgamation of, of a local order. Okay? So you put an arrow from x to y if the counterclockwise angle is less than pi. All right, so all the points look the same. All the edges look like an edge, but suddenly there's two kinds of triangles. Okay, so there's a triangle that's transitive, so that's when the three vertices show up on one side. And if you have a, a three points that hit both sides of, of, uh, of uh, your circle, then suddenly it becomes a cycle. Okay, you just have to count the angles. All right? Okay, so that's, that, especially this one is a problem. This is a Ramsey problem right here. Because every single cyclic triangle will hit both sides. Okay, so if I color my points, my vertices of my graph, red if you're on the left, blue if you're on the right, then every uh, uh, three cycle will hit both colors. And there's nothing I can do to prevent that. Okay? All right. So what do we do? Well, we've got a Ramsey problem. We patch it, and we hope for the best. Okay, so that's, maybe that's talking like a, an experimentalist again. So, yeah? Yes, Marty? Yes, Matty? Uh, Again, so which one you mean? For the Ramsey problem? Just when you decide when you take the pressure limit. Yep. You, you have two of the. Uh, okay, so. There's no antipodal point because I'm taking rational angles, right? So that's an important part. So zero is there because the, I start over here. The angle is zero. If you go the other side, that's zero plus pi. So it's not there. So e, e to the qi, <laughs> q rational. <laughs> no antipodal point. Uh, that's a crucial thing, okay? And, and, and in fact, it, it's, uh, so there, there's no point on top. So you'll see this is actually on the left because uh, th this would be pi over two. This is not a rational, okay? So there's a hole here and there's a hole down here, and you see this is where I'm gonna cut it, okay? I mean, there's many other places you can cut it, but this works. You cannot cut it like this, okay? <laughs> that, that was, I think that was Matthew's point, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, so I had the Ramsey problem, okay, with left and right. I'm gonna add unary predicates and hope for the best. 
and this turns out to be Ramsey. So which means we found the, essentially the only obstacle. My general framework that I'm leading at the end is, well, OK, uh, uh, how do you do this in general? OK, but anyway, we're not there yet. So, but anyway, so this is Ramsey, and the proof is because um, um, now I've got my structure S2, edge relation. Now I've got two unary predicate, left and right. OK, this is the same thing as a well-known structure. And it's one of them I, I told you, and you did not object, rational. Uh, usual order and uh, and uh, two unary predicates, uh, which by generosity, if you want, they're going to they become dense and disjoint subset of the rational. Okay, and it goes like this: the isomorphism. Uh, here's an example. I've got a, a, a C3, uh, okay, cyclic uh, a triangle, and I have ABC. Okay, A, B, and L, C, and R edge relation. I'm going to flip that to, uh, to A less than C less than B. Okay? They're going to stay in the same part, but I'm going to flip the order. Okay? Uh, picture, if you want, the other way to see it is going to take my C, flip it completely uh, opposite, and, and then use the, the, the order on that side. Okay? So if you want, there's a linear order hidden there. Okay? And that's what I'm going to use. Okay? But I still keep those two parts. Uh, the age of Q2 is Ramsey, okay? Therefore, the age of Ramsey, and therefore I'm done. Okay, so that's definitely a, a, a simple but very telling example. All right, questions on that? Okay, let's move on. Oh, yes, S3 is similar. So S3 is another directed graph. So instead of doing uh, angles uh, pi, less than pi, you do less than the 2 pi over 3. Okay, so you have three pieces. Uh, it's not a, a tournament anymore, but it doesn't matter. You do the same kind of structure and uh, arguments. Now you need three unary relation, and then uh, and uh, that works. Okay. All right. Uh, I n of t. So that's a composite. Okay. So uh, the disjoint union of n copies of t, where t is a tournament. So we've got five uh, homogeneous tournament. So you do this, and uh, this becomes Ramsey by the following expansion. So what do you do? You add a convex linear ordering. Okay. In the finite case, you need, again, uh, a unary predicate for each part, each copy of t. Okay. Uh, and of course, now we know uh, how to expand each tournament. All right, so I do the expansion of each t on each stripe, convex linear ordering, uh, unary predicate for each part. In the finite case, that becomes Ramsey. And the proof of that is uh, what you can do in the induction on, on n, but because it's a, it it's really is an n sequence of Ramsey pieces, and uh, a, a, a meal drag is a nice result on that. If you have a sequence of Ramsey things, the whole thing is Ramsey, so no problem there. Okay? Uh, in the uh, countable case, you do the same thing. Okay, you don't need unary predicates in that case, and uh, and uh, this becomes Ramsey. Now, I I, I, I was going to write here by standard techniques. Okay, so but it's actually quite simple, and I'll tell you, it's something maybe good to remember. Is you know your your Ramsey on the x-axis, your Ramsey uh, on the y-axis. You've got all the same structure. How do you do this? Well, you give uh, uh, a structure A and B or X and Y, doesn't matter, okay? And what do I do is I have my A and B and I project down. And now I want to do, I'm going to do Ramsey eventually on, on, the, on the X axis. But because I've got those projections, I know how far I've got to go, okay? And that tells me how far to, how much to work. So now in the projection on the X axis, I've got this, this, this bound. And now what do I do? I look at all the possible projections of B along. And each time I got one, I take a structure big enough to be able to do Ramsey there so that the projection becomes uh, of the same color. Okay? And, and, and at the end, you've got this at the bottom, and you go up. And now you start to copy, uh, to color all the copies of A. And what happens is the first move of that is you reduce it 
so that the color of A depends only on its projection. And therefore, you can do now Ramsey on the x-axis, and that gives you the Ramsey, uh, the Ramsey result. OK, so that's a bit quick, but that's a, once you got the idea, you can actually work out the, uh, work out the, the details. OK, so uh, now you flip. Uh, you have t on the x-axis and, uh, and the, the discrete i n on, on the y-axis. So now it's not a disjoint copy. It's really in the sense that you need to put edges in between, but they de they're determined by, by, by uh, t. Okay, so all the edges from a part to the other are all the same, and they're determined by, by, by the x-axis. Okay, so that's the, the, the structure t of i n. And uh, the Ramsey property here is pretty much the same. So the first thing is you need to do the expansion, okay? So you're going to do a, um, okay, all right. And that's what I was looking for. Uh, so T is a tournament. We know it's pre-compact expansion. There's a linear order hidden there, okay? So we're going to do a convex ordering, but we're going to extend this one. We already have the one on the x-axis. We're going to extend that. In the finite case, we're going to add unary predicates. And again, this is similar to my, to my equivalence classes with n uh, classes of size n. So you add a unary predicate. If you want, it's the level. That's why I call it L. But you know, just one predicate for each level. So you're freezing every element in your class. And you show that this is uh, Ramsey by, by standard techniques. Because uh, here, you're, you're, you're essentially freezing anything that was not in, uh, in T. In a countable case, exactly the same argument. Okay? You've got to be a little bit more careful here. Uh, but, uh, but it's the same uh, uh, structure of the argument. Okay? All right. Uh, oh, yes, I said I would do uh, a bit of marketing for those. Uh, um, T hat, okay? So you have a random, uh, you have, you have a, a tournament, one of those homogeneous tournaments. Take the infinite case, okay? So you have an infinite tournament. So what is T hat is you take two copies, two disjoint copies of that tournament, and edges on each part are the same, but you reverse edges when you have vertices in different parts. That's a new homogeneous directed graph. OK? All right? It's not a tournament because you have point at the same level, right? So you, you really duplicated the same structure. So there's, there's, there's points that are incomparable. But that's t hat, OK? Uh, in the finite case, you, do, uh, you, you have to fudge it a little bit. But, uh, but for the infinite tournaments, that's what you do, OK? Now, this looks very much like, uh, like t of i3. So, so you, do, uh, you, you do this, and then you get a, a Ramsey result. OK, uh, p3, that's what I call the twisted partial order. I don't think Greg had a name for it. but. So you, do, you look at the random partial order, and you split it into three dense subsets. Okay, so each one becomes isomorphic to the random partial order, but you've got three disjoint dense set of the partial order. So you've got those three, all right? And now in the partial order, you have three relations. You have less than, incomparable, and bigger than. That's relation 0, 1, 2. OK? Now, if you have two elements in a single part, you don't touch anything. You keep the same relation. But if you have elements in different part, part di and dj, you shuffle by j minus i mod 3. That's the structure. And thanks to Greg, this has amalgamation, and you get a new direct homogeneous directed graph out of it okay all right so a uh, pre-compact expansion here uh, you need to add the unary predicate for each part and you need to use the linear extension of the uh, of the uh, random partial order um, we've been thinking about that but uh, since I've been here but I think there's some twisted details I need to, to verify before I tell you the the whole story on that one. OK. All right. Uh, next case, the semi-generate.
So I, I told you I would spend a bit of time on that one, like S2. So uh, this one is, uh, I'm looking at all the finite uh, complete partite directed graph with the following conditions. So anytime you have two vertices on one part and two vertices on the other, so you only have two parts, so two vertices here, two vertices there, the number of edges from one to the other is even. This could be either zero, two, or four. That's the only, only chances. <laughs> and, and I gave you a small sample of what this looked like. Okay? All right? Okay, so again, you take two vertices on one part, two vertices on the other part, the number of edges has to be always even. You have to check that this is a class, well, this is a class of structures, you have to show it as amalgamation and all this. It's a Fricey class, therefore it has a limit. And that's, what, uh, that's what's called a semi-generic. Okay? All right, so what do we do with that one? Okay, well, you, you start to analyze it. And the first thing you notice is that uh, each time you have two parts, P and P prime, P prime defines an equivalence relations on P. Okay? All right, here it is. Uh, U is equivalent to V, so U and V are in P. Okay, but that's the P prime equivalence relation. So U is equivalent to V. If and only if, that's a new quantifier. It's a beautiful quantifier. It means you can pick an X if you want, or you can pick them all, or you can pick how many you want. Okay, so that's a great, it's a beautiful quantifier. <laughs> its negation is really nice, and I, I really like it. <laughs> so if you want to do some, some new logic. <laughs> but here's how it goes. <laughs> I don't know about the notation, but, <laughs> but I like the quantifier. Okay, so you see, look at U and V. They, they, they both arrow to X, okay? So you have U and V, and, and, and the arrows to X are the same, okay? So I pick one X, and I can see that they both go to X. But now, because of the parity condition, this is going to happen all the time. Because you give me a Z, well, now I've got two edges going to X. Now I have two more choices to go to Z. And the parity has to be even. Therefore, it has to be Z either 0 or 2. So they either both go or they both go back. So they're equivalent with respect to Z as well. So this works all the time. Okay? All right. And now, you see, because I have an equivalence relation, and in fact, this P prime gives me two classes here. Okay? I will get two, two equivalence classes here given that stripe. And now that starts to be Ramsey problem. Because you've got coloring in those classes, and uh, you can see we can't, we, we, I know there's two classes, but I cannot tell you which one it is. You know, like I give you an X, which class is it? I, I, I don't have names for them. <laughs> and that, that, that starts to smell Ramsey problem, okay? Now, th there's even more problem because I have this for each P prime. So you have, you have a finite structure A with K parts. Each one of those P prime is starting to split this in two classes, you know, finer and finer. You see? Okay? Uh, so, in fact, uh, I, I can count, you know, uh, if you have k parts, then there's k minus 1 of those, therefore there will be a, a 2 to the k minus 1 classes here on each stripe, all right? And you have to do something about that uh, to, to make it Ramsey. So, uh, uh, thinking number one is, well, you're going to add some unary predicate, infinitely many, so that you can freeze those, uh, at least name those equivalence classes. Okay? All right. But we're not going to do this. We're going to do something different. Uh, and here's what we're going to do. Okay? The first thing we do is we're going to amalgamate a, uh, a linear early order transversal. Transversal just means you pick one point, one distinguished point in each stripe. Okay? So we know the thing amalgamate, so you got to, to, to do a bit of work to make sure you amalgamate on each stripe, but you can do that, okay? And now we're going to define a new binary relation. So we're going to code some orientation of those classes, if you want, is what we're going to do. So R star UX, U and X are in different parts. 
All you care about x is its part. So in that part, there's a tj. So you look at the tj, OK? And you look whether there was an arrow from u to tj. That, that, that gives you an orientation. That will do it. That's what we need, OK? So again, I don't really care about which x. All I want is the stripe, really. So I'm just using x as a dummy, a vertex, really. OK? So um, and then we add a convex linear ordering, extending that of the transversal. So at the end, I've got this transversal and then uh, in the background, and I, I extend that ordering. So this is the expansion. So you've got your structures with, uh, uh, with your edge relation, and you add a binary relation. And then the linear ordering, convex ordering. OK, now the point of this whole thing is that we can recover the edge relation from those two things, r star and less than. Here's how it goes. I need to know, well, u, u and x are in different parts, but here they are. u and x are in different parts. First of all, I know there was this transversal around, OK? And the, the, uh, the edges between ti and tj are given exactly by that less than. So I know this direction here by, by the order relation. OK? Uh, now r star uh, is going to give me uh, the direction of the arrows between u and tj and x and ti. So I can recover that information from r star. And then finally, uh, look, I've got two points there, two points on the right, and I've got three of those edges. So by the parity condition, there's no choice for the fourth one. OK? All right? Does that make sense? OK, so that's the, 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 the crucial piece. OK, so um, uh, uh, you see, and now I'm going to start to use that to, to unravel my, my equivalence classes and name them. All right? So, um, so I've got my, my expanded structure, AER star less than, k parts, pi, i less than k, and I'm naming them. I told you there was like 2 to the k minus 1, OK? And, and look at, uh, I'm going to code them by, by, by uh, functions from 2 to the k minus i into 2. And I put them exactly in this class when I have r star ux. So it tells me which way to go, OK? So r star defines my, my function. And now I've got a name for those, uh, those equivalence classes. So I interpret now my structure, AE R star less than, as a K sequence of that form. OK? Those are my sequence. So on each part, I've got those, uh, the names for those equivalence classes. And again, it's that structure that shows up again. OK? It's the rational with my, my dense sets. And uh, I've got 2K minus 1 of them. That's how many functions I've got here. And I've got a k sequence of those. And again, I use uh, uh, Mayo Drag's result about sequences of Ramsey structures to get the, the Ramsey property. <laughs> OK? All right. And then I continue and then uh, f finish the fine, the fine points. And then I, I show that the, uh, this is a pre compact expansion. OK. All right. Um, a, a few more examples quickly. So for the rest, the complete and partite. So uh, I'm continuing the list of uh, homogeneous directed graph. So now what you do in between is just random edges. Okay, so you have all those parts. And then uh, so it's the amalgamation of all the end partite where any kind of edges you put in between. Same kind of a thing. I think now you would guess what is the, the, the pre-compact expansion, convex linear ordering. And in the finite case, you add a uh, unary predicate for each part. And then, uh, and then you need to do something a bit more serious to prove the Ramsey uh, result. OK. All right. OK. Uh, remaining cases? Uh, well, yeah, sure. I, I, I had to just to make sure I listed. So the random partial order. So you add linear extension. It becomes Ramsey. Uh, gamma n, the generic directed graph where i n plus 1, so the discrete n plus 1, uh, uh, n plus 1 vertices does not embed. That's a Frey class. 
you add uh, all linear orderings, that's enough to make it Ramsey. Uh, final one, T generic, so you've seen that before. Uh, T denotes a set of finite tournaments, and you look at all the uh, finite director graph that do not embed. So this is where we, we see the, the, the famous uh, Hansen graph showing up. And again, here you add arbitrary linear orderings, and uh, that's enough to make it Ramsey. Okay? All right. Very good. So by now, you, you, you've seen uh, that's maybe the end of the experimentalist, but you, you, you have a wide, somewhat wide enough class of examples and see what happens. And, uh, and the question is, what does it tell you? Okay? Uh, here's the questions. Uh, as I was in the last couple of weeks talking with Meodrag, so this is another example. The class D of distributive lattices. Okay, so does it have a Ramsey precompact expansion? Here, the same situation occurs as we've seen in the sense that if you try to add linear orders, you start to fail amalgamation. Okay, so it's essentially you, the class becomes dead. Okay, you cannot do anything with it. Okay, can you revive it into an amalgamation classes? And uh, not only that, but Ramsey. And in fact, there's a strong connection between Ramsey and amalgamation. So it's not surprising that uh, this kind of phenomenon occurs. Okay, I, I don't know how, how hard this is. I just uh, didn't really have time to think about it, but it seems curious. Okay, so no order expansion will give you the amalgamation, but again, possibly could be revived. <coughs> okay, so all right. So end of this uh, experiment, let's start to think. So uh, question number one, why do we have all those linear orders around, okay, in those Ramsey classes? Um, I take this out of uh, one paper from, from Yarrick, and uh, uh, so that's 05. The role of orderings was, was recognized early on, so people realized that this was showing up to, to produce Ramsey classes. And in 73, Lieb speaks about Versterungs. No, I'm not quite sure what that means. I think it means hidden of some sort. No. Okay? Rigidity. Or rigidity. <laughs> I, uh, my dictionary couldn't figure this out. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, that makes sense, rigidity. <laughs> so, <laughs> to rigidify a structure. <laughs> well, okay, so that also makes sense. You need those structures to... to, to <laughs> We, we, we need the, <laughs> the German mathematical dictionary. Okay, good, I learned something. Um, <laughs> by, by now, we, we, know, we know quite a bit. I mean, we know that those orderings show up for, for a good reason. You know, for example, I mean, we, we know a lot of those groups, the automorphism groups of all those structures I've been talking about turn out to be extremely amenable, which means they have a fixed point when they act on, a, on such a space, in particular the space of, the, uh, of those uh, linear ordering. Okay? If there's a fixed point, there's, only, there's, there's an ordering that's in the, in, in the background. Okay? Uh, it, this, this extends a little bit to those pre-compact expansion, which means that if I expand by, um, by, uh, by some relations, okay, then I have this equivalence. Okay, so I have my original structure, it's a tomorphism group, and it acts on the space of all relations. All right? Now, when my, my, my uh, expanded structure is the Ramsey property, then I can show that this actually, this is the universal minimal flow. All right? Uh, now, I'm being a bit vague over here. I never talk about the expansion property. Uh, th this is connections between embedding of your original structure and the expansion, okay? But anyway, the expansion property gives you the minimality. The, the, the Ramsey is really there for, for the, the, the universal part. But all this to say is that when I do this and I've got my, my Ramsey precompact expansion, this helps me to describe the, the universal minimal flow of the original Automorphism group. Okay. All right. Okay. So I said I would do a discussion. So 
so there we go. So discussion number one, um, bottom up. So again, that's the experimentalist. You give me a, a class of structure, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go in my lab, and uh, I'll try to find a Ramsey precompact expansion. Okay, so now I, I'm thinking about the distributive lattices as this next case. Okay, so or maybe I need a, 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 a theorem accelerator. <laughs> and ask for several billion dollars to, as an experimentalist. But anyway, then, then the idea, though, is that after a while, after all this knowledge, then you should be able to step up and understand what's, what's happening. Okay? All right. So one way to do this is a classification of Ramsey classes. And, uh, and uh, yeah, Rick has a program on that, started a program trying to do this. Okay? And that's a great program. If I can do this, if I can classify all the Ramsey classes, then I could go back, okay? Like in Greg's dictionary, you want an homogeneous directed, uh, homogeneous directed graph, you look in the list and you see them. So if you want a Ramsey pre-compact expansion, I look in the classification and say, oh yeah, it's right there. You have it, okay? Uh, Manuel started to work on that, essentially part of this, which is how do you make new Ramsey classes from old ones? That has to be part of this exercise, okay? Only once we understand all those pieces can we hope for, for a, a general classification. Okay, a method number three is uh, topological dynamics. Why? Because you saw those results that are about the equivalence of Ramsey classes in topological dynamics. So if I want to answer something about pre-compact expansion, I, I can do combinatorics and try to do it there, on the other hand, maybe, possibly, I, 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 I could learn something from the other side. It's equivalent, theoretically, okay? So, so if I can answer some questions here, I could transfer back to the, to the combinatorics. Okay, uh, number four, model theory. Now, I bring this up <laughs> because on the first day of this trimester, on the opening talk, Greg mentioned that. <laughs> Why don't we use model theory to explain all of this and make sense of all we're doing? In particular, MEQ. Okay? So we've been here for weeks uh, drinking tea and eating uh, donuts together and trying to figure this out. <laughs> all right. So a, a, a basic question was, for example, Suppose I, I, I put a, a, a generic linear order on MEQ. Can I recover all those other expansions that I'm doing? All right? Well, uh, I, I don't know the answer, but you can certainly recover this convexity of all the orderings that we have, in some cases at least. You see, in, in MEQ, you have a name for all equivalence classes of uh, zero definable equivalence relations. So when you have those imprimitive, you know, I n of t and t of I n and of all this, you know, those classes show up. Okay? When, when, when uh, incomparability is an equivalence relation, that's definable. So now you have all those names, and if I give you an ordering on those, together with an ordering of the original structure, I can do some lex lexicographic uh, a product of those and get convex ordering. Okay? So that I can do. Now, can you explain what happens in S2? Y using MEQ, I have no idea. Okay. Uh, and in fact, I've been bugging many of you for the last several weeks about that. I think the consensus is n none of us know <laughs> where to go <laughs> unless I miss something. Uh, there's also the, the, the closures. Okay, algebraic closures okay, could, could help in these directions. But, uh, but I don't know. So, so that's, my, that's my discussion about where we are, but I, I, I'm open for any further comments on this from, uh, from any of you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Welcome. Questions? Go ahead, uh, Greg. <laughs>
you have to look at things. I mean, they're not, they're not all taken care of in the system. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, there will be more tea in the. In the <laughs> yes, they will. Yes. Y yes, I cut my slides. Uh, I, I started to do this. Yes, stay Stavo is perfectly right. This is a part of the bigger project, which is the expansion property is there, which essentially follows from the Ramsey. I mean, at least you, you, you get information from the Ramsey, but it tells you that you've gone just far enough. That's a crucial step okay, for the universal minimal flow. And then the Ramsey degree, exactly. That tells you. So yeah. in this case, you know that it's the optimal? Yes, the yes, exactly. Uh, the optimal uh, it's 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 uh, it's triggered by uh, by the expansion property. So as I said, is this this game between the the original language and the expanded language? So so you 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 have a structure that embeds in B, okay, and and then you you have an expanded structure, okay. So so I'll, I'll call it star just for the linear order, and and, and then you have a, uh, maybe, maybe I'll call it B and A, okay. And now I ask the questions. I mean, will I embed? Okay. So, so the the, the expansion property is that if I give you a, an ordering here, okay. All right. Can, can I find a B such that no matter what I put here, I will have an embedding? Y you see, it, it's kind of a generic uh, notion, if you want. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, that's right. That's right. See, it is a Ramsey notion of some sort. Yeah. Um, yes? Are there more questions, comments? So, thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you.